Big number four of the Georgia high school football season and some very big games tonight. Let's join Theo Dorsey with a locker room report. Thank you, Jim. Well, Jim, to be honest with you, there were so many great games. Of course, we had the game of the week, though, and before the game kicked off, I asked for fans to give me score predictions. We had plenty of them. The closest one, Charles Andrew Sneed. Congratulations to him for picking it very close, not correct. We'll have the final score plus plenty of highlights in the locker room report. The Cook Cheerleaders send us right in. Welcome into week four of the Locker Room Report. I'm Theo Dorsey. These helmets right here means that it's game time, and there was plenty of games going on in South Georgia tonight, including the oldest rivalry in South Georgia, Valdosta at Colquitt County. I gave you the person that had the closest score prediction, but of course you don't want predictions right now. You want the final score of that game and highlights, and it was a great one. Of course, Valdosta hasn't beaten Colquitt County since 2012. John Barron is in the studio. He was at McTharp Stadium in the hog pen for these highlights. John, what do you got? That's right, Theo. It was a classic showdown in Moultrie, a South Georgia gridiron classic to be exact. Since 1978, the Wildcats have taken 28 of the 46 meeting with the Packers, but the last five meetings have been all Packers. Now, the Valdosta Wildcats travel to Moultrie for the search for their first win against Colquitt County since 2012. The Packers excited to have that home field advantage on their side. This was a game right from the start. Packers up 3-0. Rodemaker and the Wildcats inside Packer territory as his third down, Rodermaker looking, finds trouble and comes down. Packers all over him, down by a sack by Zach, excuse me, Zy Brockington. That also would have to punt. Next one, Wildcats would get the ball again. Rodermaker hands it off. Rajaz Mosley all the way inside the five and a great hit knocks him down inside the five. Now it is fourth and goal. We're talking Packers looking to hold them again here on that goal line stop. Can they go four? Yes, they can. Packers hold them for four straight downs. Get the ball back. Colquitt County goes on to put up 31 points in the second half and win 48 to 13. Lowndes taking on East Coetta Indians for the first time since 2013. Hoping to stay undefeated. Indians on the attack early as Gr Gerald Green steps back and throws this one into the end zone. Indians with a one-handed grab at six more. Lowndes looking for more on the handoff as the man with the touchdown play and Travis Tisdale takes off for the touchdown. That's it right there at six more for him. Green deep back. Let's it fly, but this time Brandon Brown says, no, 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 not this time. Lowndes takes it 37 to 12. Well, that's good stuff there. Well, Chris County had two losses all of last season, just three weeks in, and they've already matched that total. But the Cougars visiting Tiff County for the first time these two have played since 2005. Blue Devils looking to improve that streak to three straight. Tiff County's Mike Jones, he can run the ball very well. This is a first down. And it looked very easy for him, stiff arming his way to a solid pickup. Later in the same drive, we got three straight plays because these plays are going to lead to a touchdown. First, we got Caddy Curry catching the ball, getting into the, uh, the zone right there. And he got some fans happy about that catch later on. Jamison Turner, boom, right on the edge of the goal line, almost in. And you know what? You know who you want to go to, John, right here? Say who? We're say gonna go right back to him. Say it, just say it. <laughs> man, we're just going to go it's right Mike back Jones, to him, It's Mike Jones, John. <laughs> you know what? 42 zip, Tiff County gets the shutout. They improved the 3-1. John didn't get the reference, but Tiff County got the win. Lee County at American Sumter. The Trojans defense has yet to allow a touchdown all season. The Panthers looking to end that streak in game four at Alton Shell Stadium. The Trojans threatening. Kyle Toole dropping back, finding Davion Sanders. A quick pass. He gets right on in the end zone. Lee County up 28-7. Americans will go three and out. Then Kyle Toole takes back over again. Here goes Artavius Warren. It's going to be a deep pass this time. And Warren, <laughs> he's running by himself. When you run by yourself, you run right into the end zone. Sometimes it happens that way. It's out of Seven. In the next drive, Lee County, more of the same. Johnny, guessing what this play is going to end in? I'm going to guess in a touchdown. Oh, look, look at that. There you go. There Redeem it is. myself. David Goodwin <laughs> on the end of that one. 42-7. Lee County wins it. 40, actually, 49-7. They improve to 4 and 0. Oh. Thomas County looking at Cook. For the last time these two faced off, Franco Harris was the reigning Super Bowl MVP, 1975. Right off the bat, the Jackets were off to a hot start as Jalen Dunbar swarms Trey, excuse me, Trey Williams and brings him down for a sack. Now Thomas 
County Center on the attack as Quay Edwards takes the handoff and no one's going to bring him down. Shreds a few tackles. Tackles right there and gets an early lead. Jackets up, but look at that. Hornets fans are all jacked up and cheering them on. Williams on the handoff. Derrickus Wright takes it up the field. Shreds a few first down. There you go, but TCC goes on to win 44 to 18. Well, Cairo opening up Region 1 Quad A play in Columbus against Northside. They're looking for their first win of the season. Dave Nuremberg's crew, and they're up 17 nothing at the half. Cairo was really running it on them, doing whatever they want. Here goes Ronnie Baker on the scramble on third and 13. He gets 18 yards. Yeah. It's first down. Keeping it in the drive right here. 30 seconds left in the half, and well, he just scooted in, no one touched him. More damage. Cairo, they had the offense clicking tonight. They had the defense clicking tonight. That was a 19-yard touchdown. 24-0 at the half. Cairo goes on to win it 38-zip. Greener Pastures lay ahead for those syrup makers. And 2-1 and Monroe at home for the fourth straight weeks. Four straight home games to open the season, this time hosting Perry. Oh nice some joker gloves right there on the sideline I saw there. I saw him. Here goes David Dillard running down the sideline, tossing it up, but it is picked off. Looking for his receiver, but he would find a defender. It's almost like a punt there as KT Thomas takes it all the way back. But check out Dillard, not giving up on the play, making the tackle on the other end. And then here it goes. The Green Wave defense look, making Perry's offense look like the Falcons did in Thursday night football. As in, they can't punch it in the end zone. Four straight tries, no points. Well, they would get three. They'd settle for a field goal, but Monroe goes on to fall. 43 zip, they drop the two and two on the season. Now, this was a fun first block, but we have almost twice as many highlights coming up later on, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we still got a lot of games, a lot of good ones, a lot of good plays, and possibly some Play of the Week candidates. Out in Nashville, they broke open a new stadium, Raymond Jones Memorial Stadium. Let's take a peek at that, and that'll be our first highlight right after the break. Welcome back to the Locker Room Report. I'm Theo Dorsey. As always, with me is John Barron, and it's week four. Yes, it is. And it I is. know you're hyped up. I am, too. So we still got a lot more games to be uh, covering. A lot so. more games. Well, you know what? Barron, they had to go on the road last week. They were supposed to be at home, but had to change it to a road game as they're awaiting the stadium construction for Raymond Jones Memorial Stadium. But guess what, John? Tonight... It was they ready. got it. Yes, uh, I would definitely say that because another big game was the Barian Rebels looking to put that new stadium to good use as they host the Wilcox County Patriots. The Rebels haven't played the Patriots since 2003 and look to go 4-1 and one in the series. Overview of the new Barian stable, you saw it there. But here's a miscue by Wilcox County and a fumble snap and recover by Barian's Mark Jamarcus Johnson. Later in the game, Wilcox punts the ball and it's recovered by Jared Johnson, who immediately gets the win, knocked out of him by Christian Freeman. But Barians get the last laugh. They open the new stadium with a win, 28 to 19. That was a big win, big hit there. Thomasville welcoming in a cross-state rival in Everglades from Florida. Halfway through the second half, the Thomasville Bulldogs up 15. Nice play there. Here goes a field goal from the Bulldogs. Ooh. They're piling it on at Veterans Memorial Stadium, trying to add some more points onto that lead. And check out. The defense swarming on the ball. Later on, the Bulldogs showed them how to score it. Chad Masco, he literally walks into the end zone right here. Bulldogs win this one when you're an athlete like him. He's a good athlete. He's a good athlete. I don't know if you saw the feature, but they win it easily. 39 to zip, blanking the Gators, bouncing back from that game out in Moultrie. Seminole County traveling to Bacon Charter for their third meeting in the series. The Indians searching for three in a row. The Indians were second and goal at the two-yard line when the ball gets pushed out of the hands of Blazer Zeke. Dean is right there, scoops it up, and is bolting towards the end zone. Breaking a couple tackles on his way in a 98-yard touchdown run, but Blazers on the board. Indians QB flea flickers this ball to fullback. But it's tackled by Blazers for a loss of two yards on the play. But the Indians stay alive in this drive and start the second quarter. Tymir Grooms walks the ball in for the touchdown on third and goal. It was a tie at 14 at the end of the third. Seminole County went on to win 30-14. to 14. <laughs> But this is not dying, but this is giving everything that I have every single play. When I think I can't go no more. Here we go, baby. Here we go, baby. Stewart Here County is 2 0 in, for the first time in program history. First year head coach Ashley Harden looking for a third win at Calhoun County. That would be a program record for three wins in a season. Jacavius Wright taking a sweep to the outside for the Knights, picking up some good yardage, almost moving the sticks. Not quite, though. 
few plays later, it's a miscue, a missed handoff, and Brian Smith, right place, right time. He catches this ball, and he's going to the house at his own home. See ya. Touchdown, <laughs> Calhoun County, the first score of the game. Calhoun County would go on to win this one, 39-6. to Stewart County drops to 2-1 and one on the season. Brookwood and Notre Dame, and the Warriors are off to a quick start tonight against Notre Dame Academy. Bridger Middleton pushes his way through. Touchdown number two, look at that. Notre Dame can't seem to keep their hands on the ball, and Brookwood loving it. Warriors showing them how it's done. Ethan Myers picks it off, and it takes it all the way back for six, and it's 28 to nothing, Brookwood. And the beatdown continues, 45 to nothing. Warriors now three and one on the series. Well, Deerfield Windsor hosting Heritage. They haven't met since the two played in the state finals in 2012. Well, the Knights won that one. Knights up 8-7 in the third quarter. John Collier Logan was a workhorse tonight. Keeping the ball, churning his legs up right. That's a solid pickup. Very next play, same play to Logan. He's going to fall and trip his way into a first down here. The Knights trying to pad their way onto that lead. Later on in the drive, it's third and long. Jack Kimbrell says, I got to make a play, coach. Scrolling right, tossing it up, and but it's picked wow. off. Heritage takes the ball into Knights territory. Heritage goes on to win it 21 to 8. The Knights fall to 2 and 1 on the season. Tip the area Panthers playing host to the Lanier County Bulldogs. Panthers trying to look to stay undefeated. I'm gonna give you a hint. They did so. Spitz Massey, huge run here. A great player for Tip the area. He goes down though, injured. A big loss for the Panthers, but Tiff Massey or uh, Spence Massey has always Done some big things out there. He limps off the field. We hope to see him back later on in the season. Lanier County's Kyle Sermon is going to come up with an interception here as the Panthers try the aerial attack. But the Panthers' defense would make up for it, getting the ball back. And then Logan Christian is going to grab this ball. And well, he wants some points. Oh, he gets the points. Well, that's good. That's what he wanted. Tiff area goes on to win. They take down a GHSA team. 53 to 12 in the final. Panthers improve to 3 0. An interstate battle tonight, North Florida Christian and in Hayhira taking on Valwood. Exciting early in the first drive, NFC's Vaughn Hayes intercepts the ball and takes it to the house. Even a few opposing bench players looking, yes, he got flagged. The Eagles would miss the extra point 6-0. to zero. The Valiants would get into the second quarter. Nice interception on their own senior, Luke Eager. Using that pick as momentum, Valwood on the board with a powerful run by another senior, Ashton McNeil, making it 7-6. Valwood falls 35-7. Well, Southland is looking for revenge after falling in the first round of the playoff in 2015 to Loganville by a point. Southland's first drive is Parker Weldon taking the handoff and taking some defenders with him. That's a first down, rumbling, bumbling, and uh, sometimes they say stumbling. Next play, check out this brother-to-brother -brother connection. Landon Law, what up, brother? Luke Law, oh, up top, I see you. Nice catch, keeping the feet inbound. That was two feet inbound, that's an NFL catch right there by 16. Next play, Landon says, you know what? I like you, brother, but I'm keeping it myself. Fakes the handoff, oh, little juke in the backfield. Slight move, oh, oh, all right now, brother. I see you, brother. Nice sneak right here, and then he's gonna find his way in on the sneak this time. This time, no dancing, just a little, oh. just a little spin off the defender to get in there. I like it. Well, finds Pater. Southland wins this one 38 to 14. And let's take a look at some of the scoreboards from tonight. Coffee, huge win at home, 54 to 6, and Early County takes care of Worth County at home, 27 to 7 out in Blakely. Fitzgerald beats up on Upson Lee, a close game, 28 24, and Mitchell County gets a big time win on the road at Miller County, 43 to 6. Randolph Clay shut out by Pierce County on the road, 47 zip, and Clinch County nearly shuts out Dooley County out in Homerville, 40 to six. And we got some more Covenant and Crisp Academy still waiting on you guys. Take your time. Southwest Georgia at Monroe. Southwest Georgia wins at 47 to 14, and a couple more scores here. Flint River River falls to Terrell Academy, 28-21. Westwood Piedmont, you got time. Show's Take almost time. ending, but we'll get those scores soon. <laughs> Sherwood Christian wins 21 to 12. I heard the opening kickoff is returned. They're doing some good things out there. The Eagles. Let's take a look at the fishing game forecast for tomorrow. Several peaks for you to enjoy. And I know that, speaking of enjoying, you can enjoy some more highlights, a look ahead at next week, and much more in the Locker Room Report Extra. Get the WALB News 10 app, download it. We're right here, right after the show. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.